NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Hercules Tire. 60 minutes of local, regional, and touring series interviews, news, and opinion. Now a couple of guys who call Gray Galding the Donut Guy. Kyle Ricky and Buddy Long. The defending champ is back in victory lane at the greatest race in the history of spring. While one former NASCAR Euro champ opens up on top of the podium, and Justin Bonsignor will join us to discuss the consistent start to his 2016 season. Welcome to another edition of NASCAR Coast to Coast. Kyle Ricky, Buddy Long talking short track racing for the next hour. I think all but four tracks are open. Lots to talk about over the next 60 minutes, including the greatest race in the history of spring, the Stafford Spring Sizzler. Uh, Doug Kobe, uh, you know, kind of, I don't say disappoint, but it surprised me at Thompson not contending for the race win. In fact, he didn't even lead a lap, but he bounced back in a big way this past Sunday. Oh, and you knew he would. Yep. Uh, we talked about Lee Pulliam and how he was going to do it <clears throat> in the uh, Wheel and All-American series. We both have to clear our throats, don't we, yeah. right off the bat. You want to do it? One, <laughs> two, three. No, I've already. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, but uh, no, it's not It's not going to be holding any Doug Kobe back. It's just going to be impossible to do that. And, you know, when you look at the, the record that he's got, you know, with, that he had over the course of last year, you know, everybody talks so much about his Thompson success, mm -hmm. but he pretty much covered a lot of the other he tracks. Did. I mean, winning him in Adnock, winning in New Hampshire, uh, winning at so many other different racetracks, including Stafford Motor Speedway last year. He's going to be a tough one to keep down, and being on top of the game as quickly as he is now, oh, this is going to be tough. And he, and he keeps saying, you know, somebody's going to catch us. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to get on to their A game and, and catch us and bypass us, and I don't see that happening right now but uh you know we'll see it's a long season i think one guy that could will join us on the show as well doug kobe will join us to talk about his uh, third spring sizzler win from this past sunday at the stafford motor speedway but justin bonsignor mr consistency so far he's up there in points i look for him to possibly contend for this championship and, this and boy you gotta believe that he is just so happy a new season started after the uh the, just the yep. terrible way he started last season uh, just so many bad uh, results for that driver. He was on that slippery slope, the greasy ladder, trying to climb his way all the way back up and eventually, I think, finished 10th in the uh, the points mm -hmm. for last year. Got two victories at Riverhead Raceway, but, you know, it will, it will be that season that always, well, what could have been had we started like we started this year already with a third and a fourth place finish at uh, Thompson and Stafford. And, uh, yeah, this is a team that has stayed, you know, when we've looked at so many different teams over the course of the last two or three years, Changed drivers, ownership has changed, this and that has swapped around. That's one of the few teams that stayed together and has only gotten stronger. So they will be a legitimate contender for that championship this year. I believe it was two years ago. <clears throat> it's going to be a long hour. <laughs> uh, and, and our producer, Craig, is under the weather as well. So uh, He gave it to us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was two years ago, Justin was contending for the championship until I believe it was that second New Hampshire yeah. race weekend. Where you and I were both watching. Something top, happened yeah. with the motor, and he went behind the wall, finished. 40th or whatever however many they started that day and it just never got better and into the start of last season which got him so far behind mm -hmm. it was almost impossible to climb out of that hole uh they got on they, they finally got the momentum shifted in their direction a little too little too late last year but it's carried over to this year and i look for him to contend for the championship we will talk to him coming up in a little bit and i promise we're not going to just talk modifieds this hour. <laughs> no. We're going to go over to the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. And a guy that one of the great, uh, great personalities of the sport in general, Anthony Coupin, will join us, a champion from a couple of years ago in the NASCAR Euro Series. And picked up the first race win of the season. Uh, they ran two this weekend in Valencia, and he won the very first one, finished fourth, I believe, in race number two. And when we look at the, the list of talent that's on there again this year, it's not going to be an easy battle for him to win. Uh, Alain Day uh, yep. won the second day of racing in Elite One. A couple of drivers from Elite Two that did uh, very well last year that we'll talk about. I think uh, Ulysses Dassault, he yep. moved up, and also uh, Jean-Marco Ercole. Uh, maybe not had the finishes that they wanted. I think Ercoli was the Elite Two champion last year. They moved up the ladder. We kind of noticed that we didn't see Ender Villarino. No, and no. I think Eddie and he Cheever won the Jr. Last year, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, who uh, Cheever I think uh, may have aspirations of possibly doing some stuff over on the Formula One side. Uh, but you have so many good drivers from that Elite Two division that we're starting to slowly keep our mm -hmm. eye on as well that have moved over or moved up. Good field of cars. Uh, I think it was 28 different cars, 45 drivers. In about 17 countries represented in the uh, the very first event at Valencia, Spain, 
and it should be a very good season. And I believe Elite One and Elite Two, same race car. I think I so, I think yeah. that's the, yeah. the way that works, and, and you only get one car per weekend, and I believe that's what hurt Anthony last year because they had to go to a second car, and uh, he lost a bunch of points because of it. So we'll uh, talk to him about that coming up in a little bit. They also have, like much like the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and the NASCAR Xfinity and Truck Series now, they have a chase-style mm-hmm. format, which we'll try to dig into with Anthony here in a little bit. Uh, they have, a what, a semi Semi weekend and then the final weekend. Yeah, and when you only have like six weekends of racing, it will be interesting to see how that is formatted. So uh, we'll talk to him about that coming up in a little bit. As far as short tracks around the country, there were uh, plenty of open this past weekend. I count four rainouts Magic Valley Speedway in Idaho, uh, Lima Land Speedway in Lima, Ohio, (laughs) Anderson Speedway in South Carolina, and the Concrete Jungle King Sport Speedway in Tennessee. All rained out, and I believe all were Friday night tracks. There was that big band of weather that came through on Friday that uh, really messed a lot of the short tracks up, but everything was uh, nice and ready to go on Sunday. So are you telling me the same storm in Utah or Idaho hit the same track in South Carolina Friday night? Is that what you're trying to get away with? Or it was just coincidence. I don't know. It might have just been coincidence. Mm -hmm. No, No, it was uh, probably one of the best weekends of racing so far, and, of course, coming up this weekend, looks like the weather is going to be superb in a lot of areas of the country. Uh, here in this region it will be, and for the Can-Am Pro Series East, uh, they, they have their first of three road course events, the Biscuitville 150 or 125? 125. 125. Um, this is going to be an interesting race. We've talked about it. We've led up to it. We, we've had smiles on our faces when we talk about it because <laughs> uh, it was just so many lead changes last year for so many different drivers. But the interesting stat I noticed, there were 18 drivers in the field last year. I think there's a good 24, possibly good 25. Field, yeah. So that's increased. But of the 18 that were there last year, 14 of them aren't going to be there this year. And of the four that were, they finished in the top five, which was Sergio Pena, your winner. Yep. Um, Kaz Grella, who was second. Colin Cabri was fourth. And current point leader Justin Haley, or actually one of the top drivers in the points, Justin Haley, one of the winners, uh, was fifth. So then you take out of the four races we've had and four different winners, two of those in Gilliland and Fincham won't be there, right. which has Pena and Haley there. So really the odds of a fifth winner in five races on this series is going to be pretty good. And chances are it'll be a fifth new winner mm-hmm. because all the other uh, – if we have a repeat winner, chances are they've already won this season. Yeah, yeah. So uh, – or Colin Cabry started that streak back at Dover last year. So it'll be fun <laughs> to watch. Why did we have so many lead changes last year? Buddy? There were so many drivers going off course <laughs> or a little bit of rubbing going on here and there. And one of the drivers I noticed, I was kind of looking to see if he was going to be there because he's a road course ace was Dale Quarterly. Yeah. And I didn't see his name on there, and I was kind of unfortunate because he does such a good job. But – yeah, just watch it. And actually, I think the folks were down that weekend, and we were watching the replay on NBCSN. And um, it was just kind of comedy because every turn of every every No lap, one wanted to keep the lead. Yeah, somebody went off course. Or, you know, they just got together and then just was, okay, well, who's going to lead in this turn? Not so much who's going to lead this lap. Who's going to lead at right. this juncture or at this turn or at this point in the racetrack? So it was very good racing. I mean, it's a lot of drivers that, as we mentioned before, have iRacing experience or have done karting or something of that nature, but really didn't have the big-bodied stock car Mm -hmm. road course experience. So this should be really, really interesting this weekend. And, of course, they run the shorter course at VIR. Mm -hmm. With those that are familiar with that, they don't run the uh, the full – uh, course that we're used to with the old Grand Am series with the oak tree turn. They they, <laughs> they shorten it, and it's a good thing because, uh, well, they learn as they go, I yes, guess. Yes, they do. And, and, they, and do. they did a lot of that last year, and they'll do that a lot of that this weekend. So that'll be fun this weekend. Also this weekend, Kalamazoo Speedway opens up, uh, one of the great short tracks in Michigan with the Intimidator 100. Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, that as you said, that's one of the few uh, Midwest race tracks or race tracks throughout the country that falls under the NASCAR banner that has uh, yet to start. Told you before we went on the air, I was trying to figure out where I was going this weekend, and I decided to go to Rockford Speedway in Illinois. And why was that? Do you remember? Yeah, it's Dollar Beer Night. Dollar Beer and Dog Night. Dollar, yeah, dollar, that's what dog, it is. It's beer. Dogs and Suds Night at the racetrack. <laughs> but that's one of the many racetracks that you have to appreciate. They just have so many great promotions throughout the course of the year. And how many times have we talked about so many short tracks? They've got trailer races. They've got school mm. bus Figure eight racing. There was one track, I forget which one it is, and we may come across it. Skid plate racing, every, all sorts of fun. Every class they're running is figure eight. Every mm-hmm. form of motorsports is some type of a figure eight class. I think it's one of the tracks that might either be All-American or out in Evergreen. Uh, one of those tracks has it this weekend. It's pretty phenomenal. The, the 90 Minutes of Fear figure eight race this weekend <laughs> at Evergreen <laughs> Speedway in Monroe, Washington. So uh, it's a race that I 
try to watch every year. It's on usually on the internet. On yeah, you find it on YouTube. Uh, it's a it's fun to watch. Yeah, we got to get out there one day mm-hmm. too. Another bucket list item. So it's going to be a busy show uh, over the course of the next hour. A couple of other tracks opening up this weekend. Bowman Gray, the Hayes Jewelers 200 here in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Monadnock Speedway will have the Spring Dash. Among Speed Roam will open up in New York and Lake County Speedway in Ohio. So uh, I, that's probably, I think, the last big batch of yeah. tracks that will yeah. open up over the course of uh, this season. When we come back, we're going to talk to the winner of Another track that opened up this past weekend, the Stafford Motor Speedway, the Spring Sizzler was held on Sunday. Doug Kobe took down the checkered flag, his third in that event, and he'll join us after the break. NASCAR Coast to Coast will be right back on MRN.com. Restore lost fuel economy and eliminate rough idle with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Right now at O'Reilly Auto Parts, buy two bottles of Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner and get one free. Clean clogged injectors and increase fuel efficiency with Lucas Fuel Injector Cleaner. Buy two, get one free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The Toyota Racing Team wants to take a quick moment to congratulate Kyle Busch on his 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship that he won in the Camry. Don't worry, this will be as fast as Kyle in his Camry. How fast is Kyle? So fast he's won a ton of races across all NASCAR series. Plus, he's won 133 of Toyota's 332 NASCAR victories. He's even won 38 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series races in the Tundra. And now here he is wearing the 2015 NASCAR Sprint Cup Series championship crown. So yeah, Kyle is really fast. We're proud of him and all the folks at Joe Gibbs Racing whose teamwork made this win possible. Keep those checkered flags waving and take another victory lap in your Camry, Kyle. Good luck to all our drivers in the 2016 season. Head over to toyotaracing.com to find more info about the Toyota Racing Team and Kyle's journey to victory. Better get there fast before Kyle wins another race. Let's go NASCAR. Toyota, let's go places. NASCAR is a registered trademark of the National Association for Stock Car Auto Racing, Inc. This is NASCAR k Pro Series East driver Justin Haley, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. And Justin, one of those cars and drivers that'll be on the road course this weekend at VIR. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Kyle Ricky, Buddy Long, and the uh, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour champion joins us now. And fresh from victory lane at the Stafford Motor Speedway, a track in which uh, I watched you uh, grow up at, Doug Kobe, uh, well, almost 20 years ago now. Hard to believe time is flying by so quickly. Uh, congratulations again, though, on another win at Stafford and in the Spring Sizzler. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, let's keep the 20-year history there a little bit of a secret. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> 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 All it just shows how old you and I are getting. Uh, it is, uh, indeed. Uh, Talk about the race a little bit. Uh, it seemed like, uh, at least on paper, unfortunately I was not able to attend, but you led 193 of the 200 laps. Um, was it as easy as it looked on paper from your seat? Um, I wouldn't say anything's easy. You know, right. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of unknowns, and the race played into our hands with when the cautions fell and who restarted near us. And, you know, my guys did a great job in the pits to get us back out front after the pit stop. So, um, you know, we had a great car, and, uh, I think obviously we had the fastest car, and when the fastest car's out front, it, it might appear to be easy for the fastest car, I guess. But um, a lot of things had to happen right in order for us to, you know, stay out front and have a good race. So it's a true team effort from our, all of our guys. And uh, I we talked before the race just about how critical the pit stop was. No matter what position we came in at the pit stop, we knew we wanted to, you know, have our best pit stop so that we could stay out front or get ourselves further to the front. And uh, they did it. So just a great effort from our team. We're really happy to get a win early in the season. You know, it makes it a little bit easier to go into the rest of the races knowing that you already knocked one off. And that uh, really spells doom for a lot of other competitors because if they see the defending two-time defending champion atop the leaderboard in the overall point standings just after two races, knowing, and as we talked about it a few moments ago, not just the success of Thompson Speedway Motorsports Park last year on the tour, but you had a win in Stafford last year. You had a win in New Hampshire. You won in Ben Adnock. A very complete effort uh, by your race team in the last couple of seasons. It doesn't matter which racetrack it is. And that says a lot about this team and the character. Yeah, you know, um, we just take it race by race and track by track. And, you know, some tracks we're really good at. And I would think that Thompson, Stafford, and Loudon should be tracks that both Phil and I should excel at. You know, um, if you look at the 
number of starts that I have and uh, all the different teams that I drove for at those tracks. I mean, you, you'd think by now I'd know what I like at the track, and Phil's had enough drivers and set up enough different cars to know, you know, what typically works there. And it just so happens that the combination is really working well uh, with the two of us and the rest of our crew and the LFR chassis. It just seems like it's uh, a really good match right now. And, you know, even at Stafford, though, we unloaded and we were only seventh fastest in the first practice. And, you know, we did go out on a set of stickers in that practice, so it's not like we had junk tires on. And in the second practice, we were, you know, ninth fastest until we did our mock time trial run, which put us at the top of the board. And, you know, we just kept chipping away at it. I think people are mistaken if they think that we just showed up and we were two tenths faster than everybody right out of the gate. I mean, we were uh, pretty far off, you know, over a tenth off of the pace, you know, in the first practice and a half. And then we just kept chipping away. We probably made five or six different changes just to hone in on what we wanted. And we got the car fast. So, um, you know, it wasn't. It was a race day adjustment that made that car fast last weekend. Yeah, went to the top in final practice, qualified on the pole for the fifth consecutive event, dating back to the uh, the late races of last season. Thompson, you qualified on the pole, but never let a lap. Uh, was there any concern leaving Thompson uh, at the icebreaker a couple of weeks ago? Not at all. Um, you know, I, I love – I think it's uh, a great thing, a great feeling for me to have people – questioning why we finished fourth mm -hmm. oh, uh, <laughs> you know yeah, absolutely just, uh totally amazing to me to be a guy that you know still thankful to have a full-time ride and a great ride and feel like i've worked my way up to get to this ride and now i've got people questioning us when we finish fourth and that to me is a a really neat feeling to have just to know that people have that much respect for our team and what we can do at thompson um you know we uh we missed a little bit at Thompson. We had a, a probably a second to fourth place car all day, and we showed it. You know, we ran in the, the top four the whole race. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's other teams that obviously put together some great moves in the off season to make their programs better. And, you know, we said that last year, that everybody's going to go do research and try to get faster, and we have to do the same thing. And, you know, Thompson was a, a perfectly fine event for us. It wasn't a win. It wasn't anything dominating, but it was a very strong race. And uh, we already have some ideas for what we want to do when we go back there next. So uh, I'm pretty confident that Thompson's going to be a place that will uh, certainly contend for a win in one of the last three races there. And, you know, maybe in all three of the last three races there. So we'll just see how it goes. It's just uh, great to know, though, that a fourth place finish is concerning to people. <laughs> next event coming on May 14th at uh, the New London Waterford Speedball, another very good fine short track up in New England that uh, the Modifieds love going to. Todd Zegedy came home second. He was uh, he will be a part-time racer this year. Another one of the LFR drivers, Rowan Pennick, a very solid run over the weekend with Bowler was third, also winning the SK race over the weekend. But the next two drivers in line, they seem to be the two that uh, kind of for the moment have replaced a Woody Pitcat and Ryan Priest as far as a very intense early season battle. Uh, when you talk about cutting a den a line out of the uh, yard, you better go deep because if you don't, you're going to have about 17 more of them grow. And that's kind of what this Wheel and Modified Tour is. When a pit cat and a priest isn't right up there in the mix, and I know Ryan's going to run more of a part-time schedule this year by virtue of his, his Xfinity Series deal, you have that many more drivers right there waiting in the wings to challenge you. Yeah, you know, anytime Ryan and Woody aren't going to be in in the race, that's two positions that other drivers can make up. So what, whether Ryan would have won or finished fifth or finished tenth or whatever, you know, people are going to move up when Ryan's not there. And, you know, Timmy uh, certainly proved the end of last season with back-to-back third-place finishes to finish the year that he was going to, to be a contender this year. And then, of course, he stands that with the win at Thompson. So certainly the 16 team is a championship team. They've proven that before with Ryan and Mike Stefanik. And, now, with Timmy, I think they're a huge threat. And, you know, Justin was uh, just a couple points shy of winning a championship back in 2014 if it weren't for some engine trouble at Loudoun. So, you know, the 51 team and the 16 uh, have us on notice for sure. Um, neither one of them had great days at Stafford, yet they still both got top five finishes. And the, uh, from my past experience, those types of finishes are what helps you realize that you are a championship team and championship contender it's when you you know have a mistake halfway through the race and you fall back to 15th or something like that and you walk out of there with a fourth or a fifth it's just a you know not the win that they wanted but a great day for both of those teams nevertheless buddy touched on it a moment ago the the amount of drivers that can win and it seems like there's more and more you know every time we we show up at the racetrack uh, 27 cars at thompson for the icebreaker 32 at stafford that 32 number, the highest 
since, I believe, the icebreaker last year um, outside of New Hampshire uh, and some of the companion events on, on the big NASCAR weekends. What do you uh, attribute the, this you know, bit of an uptick to? It uh, seems like the tour you know, very healthy right now. Yeah, I think the bit of the uptick actually came from the downturn. Um, I think there were a lot of people with modified that were maybe running uh, some of the open shows and, and whatnot, and they said, you know, at the time the tour was only averaging probably 26 or 27 cars for sometimes, you know, 30 starting spots, and they all kind of looked at it, I think, and said, okay, if we upgrade a little bit of our equipment to the NASCAR rules, uh, get ourselves a spec motor, we should have a, a pretty competitive piece to go run the tour, and that's awesome because it's, it's actually turned into an extra five to six cars now full-time for the last two years. And, you know, a lot of these younger drivers are having success. I mean, you look at who finished in the top ten at Stafford, and I think you had, you know, Chase Dowling, Brendan Bach, and Matt Zacham all grab top tens in the spring sizzler. Mm -hmm. And that's going to put some more teams who might be considering running the tour on notice that, you know, they can go out there and be competitive uh, with the right equipment. And, you know, I think it's great when the young drivers go out there and have solid runs. Uh, You know, I'm not a young driver anymore, but I was at one time, and I can remember that if I was ever – you know, 22 years old or 18 years old and got a top 10 finish in the spring sizzler of all races, you know, I would be really excited and, and happy to go off to Waterford with some excitement and some momentum. So it's great for those young drivers to get those finishes. And I think that makes our series more attractive to other teams who might be considering joining us. Sean Salamino, another driver having a good top 10 run, came home uh, sixth over the weekend in the uh, Wayne Anderson car. you got to believe one of the uh, the things that lends to excitement, and, of course, the announcement was made earlier this week, the NBCSN television package has come back into play for the Modifieds, uh, at least, uh, I believe, about at least 12 races uh, between the Northern drivers. And, of course, the NASCAR will and sell the Modified Tour will be televised. Uh, many of those big events, including the All-Star race from the New Hampshire Motor Speedway, takes you back a long way comparing to the days when somebody might have sat in the stands with an old VHS camera trying to videotape a home movie of you and trying to see how you did out there and what your lines were compared to actually having the luxury, not only of sitting there and just watching a replay of your victory at an event, but also a great learning tool as well. Yeah, you know, I use a lot of YouTube videos to to check out racetracks, and I don't do any eye racing or anything like that, but sometimes, you know, it's nice to go back to 2012 when we drove 52 and won a lot of races and catch a couple of those videos that, uh, were televised then, um, you know, to go back and see what changes we made and, and who, how we charged to the front and whatnot. So the television package is awesome. I'm happy that they finally announced the dates were, and it's my understanding that the uh, Olympics coverage kind of put a, a damper on how quickly they were able to get the coverage out for the modified because they had to figure out all sorts of time slots. And, you know, the, the awesome thing is the modified put on a great show last year on those televised shows, and I think the ratings showed that and the excitement for it showed it. So we come back again this year with a a bunch of good races for the fans to catch. Um, All of them will be tape delayed, which, you know, isn't even really, to me, that big of a deal because that means the people who want to see the race live are going to have to go to the racetrack, which is good for the racetrack. And then, you know, the next week it's broadcast or televised for people who want to check it who weren't weren't able to go. So um, any televised coverage that we can get is great for us and it helps the fans kind of learn who the drivers are and what the tracks are that we race at and just generate some excitement for the series, which I think is long overdue. And a lot of the races that aren't on uh, television are on Mm -hmm. fanschoice.tv. The icebreaker and the entire icebreaker weekend was on fanschoice.tv, which is, you know, uh, another avenue for people to to watch the modifieds. Isn't this an Olympic sport in summer? Fanschoice.tv. I watched all of New Smyrna Speed Week right on fanschoice.tv. You (laughs) you know, I thought the coverage was awesome. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure Speed 51 obviously had a lot to do with that, but um, just to be able to actually see what you typically will only be able to watch with your eyes kind of through message board updating and whatnot, it's awesome just to be able to watch it. And, you know, if you've got a smart TV, you throw it up on your TV, and it's just like you're sitting there watching a live race. You've done some pretty amazing things in a very short period of time recently. You've had a great career, uh, I mean, going across the course of modified racing, but in the last couple of years, obviously, uh, two times a champion, sweeping a, an event or events at a uh, track that otherwise is almost improbable to do. Uh, what What's left as far as a major bucket list item that you're looking at that you still haven't attained that you'd still like to? Um, probably, uh, you know, when at Bristol, I think, uh, you know, the first couple of years the modified race there, I didn't have a ride, so I didn't get to go. And put me a little bit behind the eight ball as far as experience there. And then, of course, uh, you know, I screwed up pretty bad on lap three last year and wrecked the car when the tires weren't quite up to air pressure. And, 
I should have just taken a little bit easy. So I think winning at Bristol would be a huge accomplishment. And then, you know, it's just winning. It doesn't matter how many weight races you've won. You know, I guess we're up, I'm up to like 18 now or something like that on the tour. Um, I always feel every time I go on the track, like I have never won a race. And I think the fire is still there. And so, you know, winning at Stafford for, you know, whatever the fifth time or however, I don't know, eighth time or something like that. Um, you know, it still feels like the first time every time. And I, I go to every track, you know, we're going to go to Waterford in two weeks. And I won the Richie Evans 161 when we first went back to Waterford back in 2012. And uh, I'm going back there super excited because I just want to win at that track. You know, they made a lot of improvements there with uh, new catch fencing, brand new concrete barrier wall, um, and a whole bunch of improvements in the, on the backside for the fans. So uh, just excited to go to Waterford and, and try to win another race. So I guess what's left to, to do is, just keep winning every week, you know, that's uh, the goal and um, keep trying to distance ourselves from the competition by being consistent and having a winning car everywhere we go. Love the Waterford Speed Bowl. Love that racetrack. I love what oh Bruce Beamer has done one of those to places, it. places, if you're a short track fan, you got to get there at some point, you know, in the summer and check out that facility. It's just so cool. A ton of character, no doubt. Uh, final question for you, Doug. Um, in traffic, are you terrible <laughs> or terrifying? I guess I'm terrifying. You know, I, I love reading these things now. Um, you know, I don't know where all this stuff is coming from. He was from. reading them while he was and, driving, too. You know, I can't drive traffic, and it's lucky that we have a fast car. I started on the pole. Um, I'm pretty sure you can go back historically and see that most of the times I've started mid-pack, I've finished further up than I've started. So, um, I don't know. It's, uh, it's interesting to see how people respond when you uh, start doing well and when you continue to do well. I mean, that's the whole point of this game is to achieve – certain things and get yourself to a certain level and then mm -hmm. try to maintain it. And, you know, uh, I guess it's terrible or terrifying. It doesn't matter to me as long as we keep winning races. That, that's what matters. And, uh, you know, we're going to keep doing that. And, you know, Phil should be back from the seven post shaker rig test in North Carolina tomorrow with the results from how the car did at Stafford. So I'm really excited. You know, that's <laughs> just kidding. Um, you know, people are saying a lot of things about our car and, uh, it's sitting right in Newtown, Connecticut right now up on Jack stands because Phil's probably going through it. So, um, you know, it is what it is. We'll take it. That's what happens when you're winning and uh, happens in all forms of motorsports from top to bottom. So we're just happy to be winning races. Just ask Kyle Busch. All right, <laughs> <laughs> Doug, thanks for joining us. As always, look forward to, uh, you know, seeing you up the road here pretty soon. Uh, I guess I see the Modifieds next at New Hampshire. Best of luck to you at the next stop, the Waterford Speed Bowl, here in a couple weeks. Awesome. Thanks, guys, for having me on, and hopefully uh, I'll talk to you a couple more times this summer. There we go. Doug Kobe, uh, the winner of the Spring Sizzler this past weekend at the Stafford Motor Speedway. And when we come back after the break, we're going to talk to another driver that had a good day and has had a good, consistent start to the season on the NASCAR Modified Tour. Justin Bonsignor joins us in a minute. Coming back with more of NASCAR Coast to Coast, it's Kyle Rickey and Buddy Long right after this. Ready to take the training wheels off your race scanner? Go to FanVision.com and upgrade your experience with FanVision. Not only will you be able to hear the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. gets a good run. Drafting help from Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick. Jr. again pulls up alongside for the race lead. You'll see every moment through live video, instant replays, live stats, and more. Hi, I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number one McDonald's Chevrolet. And I never go to the track without my FanVision. So go to FanVision.com to rent or buy yours today. Hi, I'm Marty Huff. Join me and 10-time NHRA national event winner Doug Herbert for one hour of horsepower Thursdays at noon on the straight line. We'll talk to the biggest names in NHRA drag racing and keep you up to date with news from the pits, tracks, and shops across the country. Join us Thursdays at noon for the straight line, streaming live on the MRN app, the Motor Racing Network's YouTube channel, and on MRN.com. Get all the reactions and latest word from the track immediately following each race weekend on MRN's Motorsports Monday with Woody Kane and Joey Meyer. Johnny Sauter drives the number 21 Chevrolet Silverado. Yeah, I didn't know that uh, necessarily we'd spend the first race of the year. Log on to MRN.com every Monday at noon Eastern or stream the program from the MRN Media Center on demand. It's MRN Motorsports Monday only on the Motor Racing Network.
This is NASCAR Whalen Modified Tour Driver Woody Pickett, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. All right, thank you very much, Woody. Hey, don't forget that Mother's Day is next week, and oh, Pro Flower. Yeah, don't forget, Buddy. Mm. Pro Flowers just might be able to help you out. Uh, get Mom 100 blooms with a free glass vase or boss for <laughs> 19.99 plus shipping and handling, or make her day extra special. You can upgrade to a premium vase. Or boss, and add gourmet chocolates for just nine ninety nine more. Go to proflowers.com today and be sure to use the code MRN. You can't beat the price and convenience. Pro Flowers will take care of all the details. Here's the only way to get one hundred blooms with a free glass vase. Starting at nineteen ninety nine, visit proflowers.com, click on the blue microphone in the top right corner, and type in MRN. That's pro- proflowers.com, blue microphone, MRN. Remember Mother's Day just a week away. And I know Justin Bonsignor has already got Angela, his mother, flowers. Yeah. He's already got everything. I know he has. He's well prepared, aren't you, Justin? Um, I wish I could say I was. <laughs> now with the MRN discount, I will be on the book flowers. Did hand. you write all that all information down? Did you write it down? I did. All right. I did. Order today <laughs> because the offer expires this Friday at midnight. So you got to oh, I better I better get on it then this week. Talk about your weekend, Justin, who uh, joins us now on NASCAR Coast to Coast, full-time on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, and uh, hopefully going to contend for his first championship this season. So far, so good after two races, uh, two top five finishes, and you're right up there in the the thick of the points. Granted, it's still early in a long season. Yeah, it's very early in the season, obviously. Um, But uh, we learned last year that you have to get off to a strong start. Last year was... uh, Real tough for us to get going. I think it was till the fifth race before we actually finished one. So, um, really, really happy with how we're getting the season off so far. Um, maybe don't have uh, the speed to win either one of those races yet. You know, we're maybe a one or two adjustments away from contending with uh, Timmy and Thompson, and you know, Doug was in a class of his own at the end of Stafford. So, um, we got a little bit of work to do, but uh, all in all, it's, it's been a good start. Um, you know, we're right there in the thick of it. But like you said, it's real early, and uh, we'll just keep taking it week by week. And you've, you've seen both ends of the spectrum, man. Doug alluded to this just a few years ago. You were just a few points away from winning a Wheel and Modify Tour championship. Last year we had you on. You had just finally gotten some of that uh, the monkey off your back after getting off to just a horrific start by your standards. You climbed all the way up to a 10th place finish, a couple of victories at Riverhead Raceway. But the one thing we alluded to was, you know, when things had gotten so bad at the beginning of last year, you almost could be in a relaxed mode and say, you know what, I've got nothing to lose. Let's just go do it. Um, Now you're kind of towards the top of the heap this year with Doug, with Timmy, and so many others. So you said take it one race at a time, but do you kind of mix both of those together the way last year started and the way this year started as well and try try to make the best of it? Yeah, I mean, back in 2014 when we were battling Doug, it definitely uh, it got stressful towards the later part of the season. That was the first time I was contending for anything of that magnitude. So last year, you know, we, we just kind of went at it week by week and just tried to, you know, just win as many races as you can. And we tried a lot of new things and ideas, knowing that we were out of the points. Uh, I think it definitely – it was an eye opener of how uh, quick you can, you know, not, you know, not fall from the top. But we were running really good in 14. It's, it's just a humbling sport when uh, you have a year like last year. So not taking anything for granted this year. And, you know, we um, we're just we're still, like I said, taking it week by week. It's uh, we're only two races in, so a lot can happen still to any of us. But um, you know, when you can come home in the top five each week of the first couple, um, it definitely. It makes you sleep a little better during the week uh, and think about the next one and not have to worry about fixing race cars or digging yourself out of a hole. So um, it's uh, it's exciting. Uh, we got really good speed in our cars. We got a really good pit crew on pit road, and uh, I don't, you know I think we can get our first win here soon. Um, we just got to keep our heads down and keep digging. Yeah, Buddy touched on uh, some of the changes and and that happened during the off season, and there were a lot of them affecting many of the race teams any major teams to your or any major changes to your team justin uh, during the off season coming into this year um not at all we actually the only change we made was um we brought in uh, one one crew member he was uh a crew chief for a really long time for johnny leah um they went in a different direction and he's a really good friend of my crew chief bill um so he, he kind of came in as i guess uh, a car chief role he's 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 really uh, been a good addition to our team uh, maybe it uh, well, uh, maybe it definitely improved our pit road uh, team a little bit as well. So um, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't trade any of those guys for the world. We got one of the best on pit road, and uh, we just we've had a really good core group the last couple of years. I feel um, there was no 
no need for really any changes um, to the cars or to the team. And, you know, we're just looking to improve, you know, here and there with uh, personnel and whatever we can find on the track. But uh, we've got a good group right now, and uh, hopefully we can keep them together for a while. Yeah, and, and I hope the word fun fits in there for you guys, whether it's been what it was last year, climbing back up to the 10th position, or where you are right now or two years ago. Because when I look at the standings right now, I see a lot of the Long Island crowd. I see a, a longtime friend and rival of yours in Timmy Salamito, somebody you grew up with racing carts with the Riverhead Raceway and, and on a Speedway Pavement National Tour. I see Sean Salamito, his brother, doing very well. You're looking at Chase Dallin. You now see Craig Lutz making his way onto the tour as well. This tour continues to be strengthened. I mean, a lot of drivers that you had from your karting days have eventually made their way up through the weekly show, through the SK Mods, and now up into the tour. And I've got to believe it's it's just even more enjoyable to go to a tour event each and every time. Yeah, there's um, there's tons of guys that I grew up racing go karts with all over the country, whether it was you know oval track or Gold Cup stuff back in the day. Um, you got the the Penix, uh, Ronnie Silk back full time, uh, the Salminos, lot Dowling, a lot of guys that. We grew up racing together and, and having a lot of fun again at the racetrack. Um, you know, last year, you know, there was times where, you know, you just couldn't do nothing right, and it definitely makes it, you know, not fun at times. But uh, at the end of the day, we're still all level of racing where it should be fun. And uh, right now we're all, we're all having a blast. Everybody on the team has a good time at the racetrack each week, and uh, hopefully we can keep it that way where everybody's got their heads held high and uh, enjoying what we do. Talked with Doug a little bit ago. Uh, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour seems very healthy right now. On the racetrack especially, a lot of teams showing up. Uh, a, a record, not a record, but a very high car count at Stafford this past weekend. One of the highest car counts we have seen on the tour for a short track race in over a year. Outside of the walls, the stands are full as well. Uh, Thompson, a really good crowd for the icebreaker. It wasn't a sellout, but it was close. At Stafford, it looked like. Uh, it was a it was a full house at the Stafford Speedway this past Sunday for the Spring Sizzler. How much does that positive energy in the grandstands feed off to the race teams in the infield? Oh, it definitely feeds off. I mean, when you you have the pit parties and stuff like these tracks have, you know, you get to interact with the fans, and you know, we're uh, we're starting to become, I guess, a veteran on the on the tour here. So a lot of people can, you know, they they look forward to seeing you back each year, and it's fun to talk to the fans in that aspect and. You know, actually have you know fans that are pulling for you on a on a weekly basis. Um, that's always cool to see. And then you know with the the weather at the Thompson, you know it was cold as heck, and I was shocked to see that many people there. So it just shows how dedicated these people are to uh, to come to the races um, and get out of the you know the cold winters and come you know and enjoy the races. Uh, Stafford, great weather. Um, they had a you know I would say pretty close to sold out crowd there as well. And you know we head back. To, uh, the Speed Bowl here in a few weeks, and since we've gone back there, I, I don't think they've had anything short of a sellout every year, so I wouldn't expect anything different with all the improvements they continue to make there. And, uh, you know, moving forward through the summer months, I'm sure the crowds, we always have, I feel, good crowds most of the time at these races. Uh, people like watching the, the Modified Tour, um, and it's always fun when you can, you know, perform in front of full crowds. And in the in the summer months, as you're mentioning, starting really at Bristol, and Kyle's touched on this uh, earlier this year, with different modified drivers that we've had on. Starting with the Bristol event, you've got seven straight races from that point until the end of the season, which you don't go back to a repeat track. I mean, Thompson and Stafford obviously have their fair share of races, but you've got Bristol, Riverhead, Oswego, Seekonk, New Hampshire, Stafford, and Thompson. You like the way that's set up where you're not going back to repeat track and it's just seven different tracks, including two you haven't been at in quite some time on the tour. Yeah, I think that's going to, you know, definitely play some challenges for all the teams as we get through the, the last stretch there. Um, it's kind of nice that they're adding new tracks. Um, never been to Oswego personally. Um, I've been to Seaconk a few times with the MRS car. Uh, I've always run good there, so I'm excited to get to some newer tracks on the tour. Um, but, uh, you know, it should definitely make things interesting in that in that home stretch there. Hopefully we can uh, keep our team real solid and in position when it gets to that point. And, uh, you know, that'll be uh, – an interesting time of the year to see, uh, you know, who who's in position to do what and, uh, you know, get into that last little bit of stretch from uh, Stafford to Thompson at the end of the year. Heading to the Waterford Speed Bowl in a couple of weeks, uh, your thoughts about getting back to that uh, unique oval, uh, high banked, a lot of character at that short track. You've had good success there, a second, a fourth, a fourth, and then a race last year that we won't talk about where you finished 25th. But uh, You just did. You said it. You I'm had sorry. To say it. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, thoughts about just getting back to that racetrack, and, and you know, do you like that style of racing a little more uh, tighter than we have seen the last couple of weeks at Thompson and Stafford? 
Yeah, the Speed Bowls, um, I don't have a lot of track time there. I've only run, you know, the tour races and a couple of other shows there. Um, it's still a track that I'm not 100% comfortable at. We're actually going to go test there this week and, you know, hopefully find a few things to hit on. But uh, we've had fairly good success. Um, I mean, aside from Brian and Doug's success there, the way they finish first or second every year, we've been, uh, you know, right there in the top five all but one year. And last year we were running in the top five when we got caught up in a wreck. So, um, we got speed there. Just got to get a little bit better um, at finding what we need to, you know, go over them with those other guys and contend for a win. But, uh, you know, when you start the season off as, you know, I feel as strong as we have, it kind of stinks to uh, have to take a few weeks off here. But uh, it would be nice to kind of to regroup and, you know, work on making ourselves a little better. And I'm excited to get back to uh, to the Speed Bowl. It's always a fun place. That's uh, a lot of interesting fans there. They're very dedicated and diehards around there. So, uh there's uh, a lot of, you know, um, emotion and, you know, that, that makes you, uh, you know, want to even work harder to, to win races there because of the fans being so uh, into it at a place like that. No doubt will probably be uh, another sellout or at least close to a yep. sellout at the Speed Bowl. May 14th, mark it on your calendar, the next race of the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour at the Bowl. Justin, thank you for joining us as always. Congratulations on the uh, great start to the season and hopefully we'll be talking to you soon after a race win. Yeah, hopefully we can come back on real soon with some uh, some wins under our belt. And it's always a pleasure to be on you guys' show, and I appreciate it. All right. As always, thanks for joining us, Justin Bonson. You're one of the sharpest-looking cars oh, yeah. on yeah. any racetrack, anywhere. You can't miss that bright green and black card, 51 entry on the backstretch. Yeah, when you talk about Justin, I mean, the Bonsignore family is huge contributors in the motorsports world. I mean, Justin races, his brother Matt, uh, I believe, works with George Brunholzel. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he's been a big part of that. Uh, his dad, Tom, helps Gary Putnam, who does some Wheel and Sell the Modified Tour racing. And, of course, his cousin, Kyle, runs the NASCAR Wheel and Sell the Modified Tour this year. So the Bonsignore family stretches throughout the north and the south, and it's always a great family to be a part of. That new crew member he mentioned, Danny LaFerrier, a very veteran or, or a lot of a, a crew member with a lot of experience with a lot of the big teams in the Modified Garage. So no doubt will be a good addition to that 51 bunch in 2016. It's already showing after the first two races. When we come back, we're going to talk about the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series with one former champion, Anthony Coupin, will join us after the break. NASCAR Coast to Coast will be right back on MRN.com. Does your heart race for great taste? For a limited time, get 20% off Creekstone Farms Premium St. Louis Style All Natural Duroc Pork Ribs. Choose between four or eight fall off the bone rack of ribs and get up to $30 in savings. Just place your order at CreekstoneFarms.com before April 30th using the promo code MRN20RIBS. That's MRN20RIBS. Enjoy the juiciest premium quality beef and pork products. Visit CreekstoneFarms.com today. Whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules Tires will get you there. Whether you're running on dirt or running a job, our dependable, high-quality tires are the perfect fit for your needs. For unmatched value, selection, and warranty with industry-leading road hazard protection, there's only one choice, Hercules Tires. To learn more, visit HerculesTire.com or call 800-677-9535. Hercules Tires, right on our strength. It's all over at Martinsville, Virginia. Richard Petty has pulled it off. Rollback Thursday. Classic MRN race broadcast on MRN.com. Waltrip will win the track race to turn three. Earnhardt gets him. Hard into the wall goes Waltrip. Hard goes Earnhardt. Everybody else spins either way. Out of the number four corner, down to the line. Neil Bonnet is going to win. The Northwestern Bank 400. He'll beat Waltrip a two-car length. What a finish here at North Wilkesboro. Rollback Thursday. Thursdays at 1 Eastern on MRN.com. This is NASCAR k and Pro Series East driver Allie Kern, and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. All right, thank you very much, Allie, one of the four drivers in the k and East Series for Rev Racing this season. She'll be on track this weekend at Virginia International Raceway. Welcome back to NASCAR Coast to Coast. Kyle Ricky, Buddy Long, joined by Anthony Coupin now, uh, the former NASCAR k and or NASCAR Wheelin Euro <laughs> champion. And uh, back in victory lane to start the 2016 season this past weekend in Valencia. Anthony, welcome back to the show. Congratulations on the win. Not a bad way to start the the season for you with the win on day one and coming back with a fourth-place effort on day two. Yeah, it was a fantastic start of the season. Uh, You know, Valencia has never been the best track for for me. Uh, It's a very technical track. 
Uh, then on Thursday, we have uh, uh, three hours of free practice and we killed the engine. So we didn't have any setup work on Thursday in the free practice. So um, I was a bit afraid when we started off the official practice and the qualifying. But in the end, I put the car on pole. I was able to, to win the first race, uh, brought it home in fourth position in the second race, and, and we lead, we are leading the championship. So really good start of the season for us. Yeah, absolutely. When you look at the fact that last year, uh, the one victory you had comes, I think, at the next uh, venue that you're at, uh, which has been yeah. a uh, raceway in the, uh, on the border, uh, border of the Netherlands and uh, Germany. Uh, so that says a lot, and that doesn't spell very good news for your competitors if you come out of the gate as quick as you did in Valencia, Spain. <laughs> this, this is going to be a tough year for other guys. Yeah, I hope so. You know, we, we, like you said, we're going to uh, Venray now. Last year uh, I won uh, the second race in Venray. The first race I was leading until uh, a lap car spun me out. So, uh, so I could have won both uh, races there. So uh, it's, the, it's the fastest oval we have uh, down here in, in Europe. Uh, calendar so far it's a half mile oval but 24 degrees bank so it's pretty fast and um you know i love the track it's uh, 100 miles from from where i live uh, i know the people there uh, there there's a lot of fans coming down and uh, i really hope we have a weekend like last year except for the crash that we had and then uh, then it looks all good it's gonna be my next question for you about that racetrack a uh, half mile oval you mentioned steeply banked does it compare to anything that you've seen here or, or raced on here in America? Uh, you can compare it a bit to, to New Smyrna. Uh, there, there's more banking uh, in, in uh, Venray, but uh, I race at New Smyrna, and it's, uh, it's quite similar. Um, thing is, though, um, if it rains, we are going to race. Uh, we, we, we run there on, on rain tires last year and then free practice, and um, – you know, the, the strange thing is, even if it's raining, uh, we don't postpone the race. We just uh, go by the schedule. And uh, and last year, the, the, the rain uh, and the rain, we were, like, pretty close to the to the dry times. So it was only one second off. So uh, so that could be very interesting. The, the weather at this stage uh, here in Europe and in Holland is, is really bad. So uh, it looks like we're going to have some, some bad weather coming up for that weekend. Mm. Some very competitive names that are there with you. Alan Day, uh, winning day number two in Elite One. Uh, Mark Goosens, another driver that's got tremendous uh, road course experience for many years. Noticed a couple of names that were missing, and maybe you can help uh, fill in the blanks here a little bit. Andrew Villarino, the defending champion, as well as Eddie Cheever the third. But we'll also add a couple more things, and we talked about it when we were introducing you at the top of the hour that uh, you were going to be on the show. A couple of drivers from the Elite Two division, uh, basically uh, Ulysses Disso. Uh, who ran last year, did very well, and also the defending champion of Elite Two, uh, Jean-Marco Riccoli. So uh, you've got a couple of heavy hitters that, while you may not have a couple of the ones from last year there, uh, a couple more are pretty much come into their place. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think the championship is stronger than ever before. We have a lot of young guys coming in, uh, and then we have them quite established driver like Mike Mark Goosens, who has been winning Le Mans, who has been... Uh, on the podium in, in Rolex uh, 24 hours uh, at Daytona. He's a very experienced guy. But then the young guys you, who normally step in Europe into formula racing, they, they, they start discovering the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. And they're all young, strong guys. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it's tough. You know, they, they all want to beat me because uh, I'm the defending champion from 2014. And under Villarino, like you said, he's not there. So, so there's uh, a lot of eyes on me, but, um, you know, the, the championship is growing, and, and that's what we want to have. We want to have good races. We want to grow NASCAR here in Europe. And if you look at Valencia, we had a great event, a lot of spectators. And uh, it's, it's the fastest-growing championship back here in Europe, and that's why we have a lot of young guys coming in. Now, here in the States, we have the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup, and now the chase in the NASCAR Xfinity Series and Camping World Truck Series you also have a chase-type format with semis and then a final at the end of the year. Explain what it takes to win a championship under this format and, and even explain the format a little bit uh, for fans that may not be up to speed with the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Yeah, well, the, the first eight race, we have 12 races during the season. The first eight races, we just have normal points. And one of the races, if you have a bad result, you can take uh, the result away. So you can dash one result, which means out of the first eight races, only seven best results count. And then we go to what we call the semifinals and the finals. And there you have double points. So those two weekends are really important. If you, if you mess up in the last two weekends, you can forget about the championship. So uh, 
uh, if you see Alan Day, he was really good in the semifinals, in the finals uh, last year. And I think before the semifinals, he was in sixth position and he came back all the way to second and almost uh, grabbed the title. So uh, you have to be all up there by the end of the year. And uh, during the season, you have to try to learn the car as good as possible because uh, we had a, a lot of... Uh, developments on the car which makes uh, setting them up on, on the new tracks quite difficult. Yeah, I will make that American Festival in Belgium that much more excited. I think that's where Alain Day had quite a bit of momentum going in to the uh, tail end of the season. We see the pictures. We don't have the opportunity to watch the races as often as we'd like to, but I've got to believe the energy and the excitement and just the, the glamour of this program just continues to build. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's uh, like I said, it's the fastest growing series here in Europe. We have uh, huge numbers of spectators coming. Some races we have more spectators than on Formula One events. So that's for a championship, which is quite new. It's, it's amazing. And, uh, you know, the fans are really enthusiastic. And uh, it's a great honor to be part of the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. And, and uh, I want to thank NASCAR for giving us in Europe the opportunity to, to become NASCAR drivers. And it's just fantastic that we have this opportunity. Many of those events uh, can be seen on fanschoice.tv. I believe the Valencia races were on uh, this past weekend, although during the overnight hours because of the time difference. But uh, look forward to hopefully being able to watch those in an archive form here down the road. Uh, what does your racing schedule look like over here in the States? I saw you at Daytona in, the, uh, in February, part of Speed Weeks in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, driving for uh, the Godovic family. Uh, any other plans to come back here and uh, we'll see in some of the NASCAR series over here in, in America? Yeah, exactly. We're working very hard with the sponsors on uh, doing some more races over in the uh, U.S. You know, we have no, no races in the Wheel and Euro Series uh, during the month of July and August. And uh, in August, I, I definitely want to come over and do one or two road courses. That would be, you know, I have a lot of road course experience, so that would be great. And then uh, our season ends in October. So uh, last year also, uh, I did two Xfinity races in, uh, in November. So uh, we want to come back in November as well and uh, for sure try to do Miami and, and maybe one or two more races in Xfinity. We're working very hard on it, and I, I think uh, by the end of uh, the month we will uh, establish uh, our program in USA. Well, it was very good to see you earlier this year, and I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of you. It's great to have you uh, with us. One of the things that you know you always look at to improve on from the previous year what what part of a season you know where did things fall down where can we improve on i think you guys already uh did one of those by taking a victory at valencia spain but the one victory at venray as we alluded to just earlier uh that was the only victory you had last season where were the other areas that uh, you guys were looking to pick up your program and say here here's where we slipped this is what we need to improve on for this year to win this championship again yeah, we did a lot of uh, winter testing. And, and last year, you know, the car stayed similar. We didn't have a lot of uh, development on the car. So we thought, okay, we have quite good uh, setups for all the tracks and uh, we don't need so much testing. But then, uh, no, the aero package changed, the suspension package changed, uh, the brakes on the cars changed. So we had a lot of changes on the cars and, and we did a lot of winter testing. Uh, I, I think I never did uh, so many miles in a uh, and the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series car like this winter. So, uh, and that's where we made the difference. We came down to Valencia, and I even missed the free practice, but still, immediately from the official practice on, we were up there. So the team did a fantastic job in, uh, in making the car faster. And uh, so uh, I think it's a, it's a team effort, and, and the team is doing a great job. We could see also in Elite 2, uh, our car, uh, the other car from our team won the race. So, uh, so... I think the winter preparation was a lot better than last year. And you're the point leader heading to Raceway Venray here uh, next up on the schedule for the NASCAR Wheel and Euro Series. Anthony, as always, thank you for joining us. Uh, congratulations on the win over the weekend, and best of luck to you when you get uh, to Raceway Venray here in a couple weeks. Thank you. Talk to you soon. Thank you. All right, Anthony Coop in the 2004 NASCAR Wheel and Euro champion and race winner already to start the 2016 Wheel and Euro season. Back to wrap things up and preview the upcoming weekend of racing next here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Coming back with more of NASCAR Coast to Coast, it's Kyle Rickey and Buddy Long right after this. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. 
If it's hard to stop or you hear squealing and grinding noises during braking, stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts. You'll find the brake parts you need from trusted brands like BrakeBest, BrakeBest Select, and Wagner ThermoQuiet at everyday low prices. Play it safe with brake parts from O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices, every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Live sports are the one true reality entertainment where a single dramatic moment can become timeless. In NASCAR, Motor Racing Network's live broadcast elevates your senses to the sights, sounds, and struggles taking place on the racetrack. Keselowski to the bottom of the racetrack. He tries to slide up. Newman is there. Sideways is Keselowski. The power of radio to the imagination of the listener. Tune in to the Motor Racing Network. Visit MRN.com for an affiliate list in your local area. Hey everyone, this is NASCAR Modified Driver Keith Rocco and you're listening to NASCAR Coast to Coast on MRN.com. Now back to Kyle and Buddy. Keith Rocco, another driver I'm sure we're going to have on very, very soon. Hey folks, real quick, we want to ask for your help and in exchange, give you a chance to win your own Google Chromecast in an effort to give you the kind of web programming you want. We're asking if you'll take a quick online survey at www.mylistenerstudy.com. The survey is completely anonymous and will help us give you more of what you like. And don't forget to enter for the Google Chromecast. Again, that's mylistenerstudy.com. We really appreciate your feedback, and good luck. Uh, and Keith I've, Rocco, they're going to say, we want Rocco on. Well, you know he's going to be on. I've entered. Have you? Mm-hmm. Have you really? Mm-hmm. I want more NASCAR coast to coast. I can live with that. I, can, <laughs> I want Kate Dallin back on here. It's like pulling teeth to get that kid on here, and we can't get her on here. That's funny. I know. Yeah, it was the, a know. bad pun. <laughs> For those that so don't know, Kate won her very first late model race, yeah. a daughter, a 19-year-old daughter to Wally Dollenback Jr., uh, who many know from his driving days and now television days. She won this past Saturday night at Hickory Motor Speedway. Very good race. And, uh, you know, talking about the racing lineage that that family has, we'll have a chance, hopefully, uh, to have her on next week. She got her wisdom teeth pulled. Uh, yep. What, yesterday or today? Monday, yeah, Monday. Monday. Yeah. So, obviously, that's uh, brutal. So, chewing that cotton. So, um, yeah, she'll be on next week, and uh, hopefully our winner of the uh, the Survivor of the Biscuitville 125 <laughs> could be Allie Kern. We could have two female that's drivers right. on next week. You never know. Could be. Uh, and so we'll talk to her next week. A lot of this racing this past weekend. California was hot and heavy uh, with short tracks in action. All-American Speedway. Jason Philpott won there in their modified division. They're back in action Saturday, May 7th. Kern County, they were in action. Buddy Shepard one for the second consecutive week orange show speedway opened up uh, mark scatterford took down the race win in the late models uh bullring had hometown heroes night uh, honoring the first responders mm-hmm. emts firefighters police officers twin 35s for late models went to noah gregson and justin johnson but congrats to utah police officer nick nucatelli i hope i said that right he I- won the bomber feature and a uh, police officer honoring him on that night picking up a victory i That's think pretty it's cool. the Nichelli? I think. I talked that to would, that Hannah at the racetrack sense. the other day. Nichelle. I think it's Nichelli. I would never spell that right if that's what you told me it was. Spring Sizzler, where we talked to Doug Kobe a little bit ago, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour winner. Rowan Pennick picked up the SK feature win, holding off Woody Pitcat at the finish. Michael Bennett won in the late models. And Tony Membrino Jr. won in the SK lights. And Alexandra Fern picked up the Dare Stock win. 30 cars strong in SKs. That looked yes, good. Yes, great show. Frank Cozy, the 358 mod winner at Grandview Speedway in Pennsylvania. Matt Shepard. Two straight of the Dirt Modifieds at Utica Rome Speedway up in New York. In Florida, it was Brad May winning the Pro Late Model feature at the New Smyrna Speedway. At the Meridian Speedway in Idaho, Justin Ellis picked up the Big Ten Late Model feature event victory. Daryl Nelson, the winner in Late Models at the uh, Cedar Lake Speedway. Uh, other winners over the weekend, I believe, Meridian Speedway. Did you get that one I in Idaho? I just got that you one. You just did that one. Justin oh. Ellis won. Uh, name along, she won along with Donnie Winan, I believe, at Evergreen Speedway and twin Late Model races out there this weekend as well. Uh, right. Rockford Speedway, Jacob Gilly held off Michael Bilderback for the late model feature win. They are back in action this Saturday night for your favorite night of the year. You mentioned the top of, sh- mm-hmm. top of the show, Dollar Dogs and Studs Night. <laughs> not Studs, Suds. It's not Dollar Studs Night, it's Dollar Suds so Night. Might be okay. some studs there. What's on your mind right now? That's uh, You're hungry. I know you're hungry Very. right now. Uh, congratulations, Ty Majeski. He picked up the big late model win at Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway over defending champion Steve Carlson and Mike Carlson. That kid continues to be very impressive. And J.C. Newell picked up the race win at the Lebanon I-44 Speedway, holding off Jake Griffin this past Saturday night. want to thank all the guests on the show today. It was another quick one. We had Doug Kobe, Justin Bonsignor, Anthony Coopin. 
For Buddy Long, Robbie Mays on graphics, our producer Craig Moore, I'm Kyle Rickey. We'll see you back here next Wednesday on NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. This has been NASCAR Coast to Coast with MRN short track experts Kyle Rickey and Buddy Long. Tune in next Wednesday at noon at MRN.com for more talk from NASCAR home tracks and touring series. NASCAR Coast to Coast is also available on demand in the MRN.com Media Center or download from iTunes or Stitcher. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.